This is Drom Shakasuto. Thanks for watching. Please remember to subscribe and like this video. Baruch Hashem. Part of uh, water got the nature that they receive the, the shape of the vessel because they've been created in a certain way that they're catching the shape of the vessel and the souls and they have a similar nature and that reminds us of the water and that's why the, um, the souls are being called Maim Bochim, crying water that's the nature of our souls they're desiring and crying to the Creator that they want to come back to heaven the place that they been, took out from and that nature of water is, in a way, in a certain aspect, is problematic because they are catching the shape of the vessel. So, now, if the Creator gave us a certain vehicle, that that's our body, and the soul that is different is catching the shape of our body, so we're in a problem. Because it's very easy to forget who we really are. And to think that we are in the shape of that body, so okay, I'm that body. You hold a cup of water, and what you hold? A cup of water, and the water are not a cup, even though that they're in the shape of the cup, but the water are completely separated and different and not the cup. They are water. Ask them, who are you? It's very easy to say, I'm a cup of water, because they're in a cup now. So. When you're a prisoner in your own body, it's a problem. Because when someone asks you, who are you? So you start describing the shape that your soul received. Yesterday in class, I said something that I didn't even thought about it deep enough. That I said, you don't have a soul. I said, you are a soul. You don't have a soul. You're not a body that carries a soul. You're not a vehicle that carries passengers or drivers. You are the soul itself. And now you are a prisoner of your body. You are trapped in physicality. But you are divine. That's who you are. You are a godly soul. Now to connect ourselves to that, it depends in the power of your imagination. How much you're going to set yourself free from prison. And that's the reality. That's not an imagination. Even the prophets, they were using the power of imagination while receiving the prophecies. But their power of imagination was clarified and purified so they could see what the Shem was using <coughs> The power of imagination for, they realized the real s s wisdom and message of the Creator to them while using the power of imagination. Now, let's say that you imagine something and you want to say, okay, it's not real, but what is not real in it? Maybe the conclusions that you come up with after having that vision or that dream or that hope in your mind is not right or not connected to reality. But the fact that the Creator gave you power of imagination is real and that it can and should be used in a right way, in a fantastic way, in a beautiful way as part of the creation. You need to use your hands, you need to use your eyes, you need to use your heart. How you use your heart? If you don't feel with it, if you don't love with it, what, do you, what does it mean to, to you? It's a mitzvah, it's an obligation. Okay, you need to love Hashem with all your heart. Okay, how are we going to do that now? Let's love Hashem. How do you love Hashem? You're going to think to yourself that you're going to dedicate your life to learning. Is someone else going to dedicate his life to work on his attributes? Everyone will do something else. Someone else will decide to learn Torah for Hashem. Someone else will decide 
to drop off all of his selfish will and to give his soul to his children. Drop off his career and, and, and invest all of his time in his family. Everyone will love Hashem in a different way. And you know what? There's going to be a certain person that will sit on the bank of the river and will send flowers and hearts to Hashem. He, uh, he, you, and you can love Hashem like that. You have stories from the Baal Shem Tov that he saw people that are playing the flute, that they were holding the Sidur and saying the ABC, the Aleph Bet, and, and by that they expressed their love to Hashem. And it was a higher level than those learners that were sitting and dedicating years on years on learning and, and, and understanding complex wisdom and sugiyot in the Gemara, in the Talmud. And their pure heart of just loving Hashem like that, hugging Hashem and kissing Hashem and, and doing things that we will consider as weird. Why? Because we're not understanding the true potential and the true intention of the Creator by creating us with a holy power of imagination. Because He gave you a certain spirit in a certain mood, with certain talents, with certain abilities, with, with certain character, that that's who you are and you must use it. There's going to be a person that will clap his hand and, and will dance in the streets and he will be righteous. And there's going to be someone else that will do the same thing and he's just crazy. And he is just crazy. And there's no reason to appreciate him for acting silly. And the truth depends only in the real intention of his heart. So we are not here to judge no one else. We're here to express the real light that Hashem planted inside of ourselves. And that is the biggest war of them all, because all of our surroundings, all of the creation is carrying shapes that are constricting and closing and blocking our eyes from understanding our true potential that is endless. And only when you close your eyes from this world at all, and your only dialogue is with Hashem, and with honesty with yourself, with your true self, you know, Rabbi Nachman of Breslev, except of other very, very high things that he said that might be sound even crazy. He said once that the person should reach a level in his prayer that he will say, Yehi ratzon mi lefanai. May it be my will, not Hashem's will to answer my prayers. May it be my will that my prayers will be answered. Like that Hashem is praying. The Gemara is bringing in Masechet Brachot that Hashem is saying, Yehi ratzon mi lefanai. May it be my will that I will want. Hashem is praying to Himself. So if Hashem is praying to Himself, there is a sign that we can learn from Him that we should pray to ourselves as well. If you see that you have a bad nature, if you see that you have addictions, that you have bad, bad attributes, that you have bad habits, that certain things are stuck with, with you in your own life, you need to work on it. You can go and ask Hashem for years and years, Hashem, save me from this. If you know that you have a problem with your iPhone, you need to put down your iPhone. And even if it's a war, it's your issue with your iPhone and prayers won't answer your problems. Because you have a certain moment in the day that in that moment you're taking decisions. That the free choice is in your hand. It's true, we do believe in Hashem. And we do believe that Hashem is in charge. And we do believe that Hashem is on top of everything. But there is also a certain time in life. And it's the time of the present. It's not in the past and it's not in the future. It's in the present. That we have the free choice in our hands. Now I am literally choosing my words. I can stop and I can continue. And it depends in my will. If I decide and I want to stop, I'm stopping. And if I want to continue, I'm continuing without stopping. And if I want to ignore a certain thing, I'll ignore it. And if I want to put my mind on it, I will put my focus on it. And I won't stop drilling until water will come out. It depends in my will, in the intention of my heart. So there is a place that I can make changes for myself in my life and it doesn't contradict the faith. It's the power that Hashem gave you to overpower all challenges, all inclinations. 
and to be strong and powerful to go and to fight and to take decisions and to come to conclusions and to make change in life. Like that it's written. That in a place that there is no one else except of you, you need to be that man. You need to become that man. Who is that man? That man can be the man of God. Ha'ish Moshe. It can become no matter who you dream to be. Your potential is supplying your dreams. Hashem the Creator is sending to you also your dreams and your hopes and your holy desires. All of those are being sent by Hashem, by the Creator, from within to your awareness, from the back of your mind, from the connection of your soul, coming in that channel, into your awareness, into your thoughts, into your feelings, and suddenly you desire something, and you want something else, and you hope to achieve something. All those desires are hints from the Creator Himself that is guiding you and hinting you to which direction He wants you to go. Now, how are you going to clarify the power of imagination? How are you going to sift it to know, to recognize if my desires, bad desires are dragging me, my lusts or my fears? I want this. Maybe I want it because that I'm too scared to face a different challenge. Maybe I want it because I can't bear it anymore and I, I just want to drown in something. Maybe wrong things are taking me. How am I going to know? When you serve Hashem in the straight way, in an honest way, it will bring you to happiness, to real happiness, not to a temporary happiness, to a happiness that will bring you to completion, to complete understanding of yourself, to get rid of all of the doubts, to become a happy person. That is the result of following the light of your soul, of following the truth, serving the real Creator and not your imaginations. Now for that, the Creator gave us the ability to recognize our emotions and to know if the things that we are doing are really bringing us to happiness or that they are just making us miserable. There are certain things in life that you found yourself chasing after and in the end, after achieving them and finding those things available for you, you found yourself very frustrated and not happy at all and sad and depressed and broken and disappointed. So those things you can recognize and because that you have your ability to sense and to feel, you recognize that they were not the things that really you've been sent to chase and, and, to, and to find and to bring into your house. But other things brought happiness to your heart. Other things brought you to deep understandings. And those are the things that you need to achieve. But for that, we must believe in ourselves. You must believe that the Creator gave you a certain desire for certain things. Let's say for music. There are people that can play for hours. Do you know what's the use of playing the piano, playing the guitar, playing accordion, playing whatever instrument you, you play? Do you know the, the use, how useful, how great it is? You don't know. The Levites in the temple, they were playing the, the instruments. Okay, so what was their intention? In that, in the pure intention of the player, depends the success and the, and, and the use of his music. If he is an impure player that got filthy thoughts and filthy desires and he's playing to satisfy people or to draw power or respect or honor or money from people to, to, to be fed by their lusts and desires and honor and respect and whatever. So by that he's corrupting the world with his music. But if his intention is to bring joy into the hearts of the listeners and he wants to make people happy and he's just enjoying seeing people happy and dancing and clapping their hands and, and, and redeeming themselves from their sadness, so by that he is influencing in a good positive way on the world and he's purifying the air and in every place that his music touch, purity and holiness is, 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 is growing. So... The power of the imagination means the deep thoughts that you have in your minds, your assumptions, your hopes, your dreams are taking place in reality when you set them free. 
if you want to be a painter, if you want to go and hike, if you want to tour the world, if you want to see places, if you want to learn a profession, if you want to have certain skills and to develop them, if you want to work out that you will feel good with yourself, if you want to do whatever, one wants to make Aliyah to go to Israel, another person wants to go and, 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 and travel the world. He feels that he's got sparks somewhere in Switzerland, in South America, in Brazil, we're now planning to to Argentina. I have people in Argentina that are, are, are begging and, and, and crying that we will come. So what should we do? Maybe I should go back to Israel. How am I going to know? I need to check inside of myself what really Hashem wants from me. And words of truth are close to us to recognize if we're being honest or if we're lying to ourselves means that when you have certain thoughts in your mind, you need to pay attention to those thoughts and to check between you to yourself what's really going on. What is my motive? What is the reason? Why am I thinking about it? What's the intention of my heart? And then when you check yourself and you find that you are honest and you find that you are truthful and that your intentions are good, then you need to go with all your power in that direction, no matter what the world will say, no matter how many people will stand up against you, no matter, matter how many arguments, no matter how many wars, but again, if you see people start to react against you, you need to check yourself again. If it's your family, if it's your, your closest friends, if your parents, people are, are arguing with you, people have issues with you, you need to listen, you need to check. But again, if you checked, and after checking, you realize that you are honest in your will, in your desire, you must go with that holy dream of yours all the way and never to stop. Because that's the only way that you will be able to accomplish the mission that you've been sent to, to, to achieve, to accomplish. Because Hashem is communicating with us from within. And He is putting His message and His will inside of us, in our hearts, in our souls. And we cannot ignore that anymore. We cannot. The world becomes so gray. The world becomes so dark. People are suffering so much. People can't stand themselves, can't look at the mirror. People can't hear their voice. People are telling me, I want to sing, but I hate my voice. What do you mean? I know such successful singers that sounds like frogs. They have a horrible voice, but they love to sing. And that's why their audience love them, because they see their desire to sing with the heart, and they're singing their hearts, and it's enough. If really you want to sing, you should sing, but I don't know how to sing. So what? But if you want to sing, so sing. There are people that are so depressed and so broken. And only because if you will check yourself, you will find that true. Why are you sad? Why are you frustrated from life? Only because you are not letting yourself become who that you know that you are. That's the only reason why you're sad. You're sad or because you're not doing enough of what that you dream to do, or that you took too many other things that are not really in your priority on yourself. So you're not happy because you're not balanced, because you're not doing what that you feel that is the thing that you're supposed to do. So you're not happy. And like we said before, you cannot be happy. There's no way that you will be happy if you will continue to follow other people's opinions and other people's methods and assumptions of how you need to work and act. Because as long as you're following people, you're not following Hashem. You cannot follow two. You need to follow one. And what is Avodat Hashem? To serve Hashem, to work for Hashem. Okay, I want to dedicate my life for Hashem. It must be Pnimiyut. It must be something inner. It cannot be, okay, I'll be religious. It cannot be that the conclusion of how to serve Hashem is to join a certain religion. Because you can look and see that inside that religion that you're about to choose to join to, there are many, many people that are not serving. 
There are many, many people that their lives are dedicated to chase after honor, chase after money, chase after lust and desire. Religion is not a book. Religion based on faith. So first of all, you need to be a real believer, to have a real connection, relationship with the Creator, that you believe that created you and sent you to that mission. And as long as you're not well connected to Him, wired and channeled to Him from within, you're disconnected from the Source. And when you're disconnected from the Source, you can read and read and read and read and read, and it won't be useful. It won't give you anything. Why? Because you are not charging your battery. You are disconnected from yourself. And you're just pretending to do something that you're not really doing. And you're just trying to imitate other people. And there's no way in the world, no chance in the world that you will find a way how to become like someone else. It, you are an individual. That's the nature of your creation. You've been made by the Creator in a certain shape, in a certain figure. Came down to this world, in a certain world, in a certain house, in a certain time. And that's it. That's your destiny. And nothing can change it and you cannot become someone else. You just need to listen to the inner voice of your true being, to the essence of your creation, and to be that soul. And just to express your holiness and your spirituality, your inner voice. You must shout it and scream it out to the world that everyone will find the Creator. And you don't need to force others or to convince others. You just need really to be yourself. When you're buying sodas in the grocery store, you need to be yourself. You need to do it with grace of truth. And not with grace of lie. Without sheker achen vehevel ayofi. Without trying to people to see how that you reach out to that bottle in a noble way. That you're so nice with your kids and you're smiling to everyone. You're a liar when you're pretending to be nice, to be polite. You're lying. When you're faking your being, you're just not being yourself. If you're upset, you are upset. If you choose to work on yourself and not to explode on people, great, do that. It's amazing. But when you are not exploding your inner anger because you're afraid what people will say about you, you're a liar and a coward. And it's a problem because you're lying to yourself and you're pretending to be someone that you're not and you're not being honest with your condition. And that's why you cannot even start working on yourself to go out of your challenges and your bad attributes. And you're not working on yourself because you're too busy to deny and plaster that it will look amazing. Instead of just putting your mind into your real problems, hey, my kids are driving me crazy and I need to deal with that problem, and then to work on it until you solve it, and then you will be healed. But as long as all of your effort is to show off to the world like everything is perfect, you will never be healed because you're still lying to yourself. And a liar cannot stand close to Hashem. A liar cannot stand in front of Hashem and talk to Him because the seal of Hashem is the seal of truth. And when you are not saying the truth, Hashem is not signing on your prayers. When you're still lying, Hashem is not signing, is not approving your prayers. Because your prayers are coming from a dishonest place, from a place of lies, from a place of fears. And when you're afraid, you don't understand the reality of, the, of your existence. When you're still scared of what will happen, of what people will think, of what will... It is showing that you are disconnected from the real truth of Hashem's being and existence with you. Because if you would just understand me, if I would just understand how much Hashem is with me right now, I would find powers to do whatever I need to do. How do you think that King David was flying? How do you think that the holy 
Kohanim were flying. How do you think that Elijah the prophet opened the, 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 torn the, the, the Jordan River? How do you think that Moses opened the sea, the Red Sea? How do you think that all those wonders took place? How do you think that Moses did something and wonders happened? How do you think that all those things happened? Because Moses was righteous and King David was holy and Aaron was divine? No! Because there is Hashem in the world and Hashem is above this world and Hashem is dressing Himself in the rules of nature and Hashem is the only one that can break that nature. Hashem can break the code because He created the code and He knows the code. When we as creations are stuck in that matrix, we're still behind the curtains and we don't realize that it's all a game, that it's all a code. So then we're also part of the system and we can't change our destiny and we can't succeed and we can't move and we don't know what to do and we need to wait and he should call and she should worry and he will go and pray even and spend thousands of hours of praying on things that one minute of honesty can solve. Because in that moment that you're really connecting yourself to the Creator, you realize that there is no one thing in this world that He cannot change. He can do whatever He wants in every moment. We're waiting for thousands and thousands of years for redemption that can take place in a minute. And that's how it will take place, finally. In a minute. Suddenly, pitom yavoyom. It will be that day of redemption. Suddenly Mashiach is already here and people will say, hey, what? Really? And that's it. And he's one of us. And he's already here and his prayers are making changes. Why? Why his prayers are so powerful? Because he's Mashiach? If it would be because that he's Mashiach, so we don't have a chance. If Moses became Moses because he was Moses, so there is no game, there is no opportunity, there is no way for our success. It's not a game, it's not, not fair. Only when all of us got the same opportunity and same option to grow and to become something, then it's a fair fight, then it's, the world is fair. When it's available for all of us to grow and to succeed, then it's fair. And Hashem is close to everyone that calls Him with truth. And when Hashem is close, it means that your awareness, your wisdom, your eyes are being opened and you start realizing that it's all in the hands of Hashem to run the nature corresponding to His will. Now you need to nullify your will to His will and then He will cancel the will of other people, nullify their will to help you that you will execute His will, His desire. When you are standing and praying in Pnimiyut and expressing your inner thoughts, then you are satisfying Hashem. When you are satisfying Hashem, Hashem becomes to be in the aspect of a female that is surrounding the men. It's written in the Zohar Kadosh, and Rabbi Nachman explained it in Likutei Moran. And the Creator becomes to be a female that receives satisfaction from a male, and you become to be a male, and you become to be the Pnimiyut, the inside of Hashem. And Hashem is making sure that you, your will, your holy desire will be answered. Because that you prayed to Him. Because that you nullified yourself to Him. And you satisfied Him with your prayers. So now He will answer your prayers. And your prayers and your holy desires and your holy will become to be the will of Hashem. Because He wants now to satisfy you. So who is leading Hashem? The righteous man. Tzaddik Moshe Lir'at Elohim, the righteous man, he receives the government, the ability to control and to lead the Creator. 
like Moses, like King David, that Hashem is telling them, go right, and they're telling, no, 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 we're not going right, we're sorry, there is something else that we need to discuss, talking about it with Hashem, and then Hashem says, you know what, you're right, I'll do what you want to do. And they're convincing Hashem. And Hashem is happy when they're winning. We're singing and praising the one that when we are winning him, he is happy. He is happy. He is happy and he's succeeding. He's succeeding in his will. In what he's succeeding? Which will? That he wants us to succeed. That he wants us to be satisfied. That he wants us to grow and to enjoy life and to be healthy and wealthy and strong and powerful and that our mind will work right and that our dreams will come true and that all of our hopes and prayers will be answered. That's his will. He's a parent. He's a father. He's the creator and he's got his creations running between his legs and he wants us all to be happy. I asked that once in class. Now you see your child eating ice cream. Are you receiving satisfaction, joy, just from seeing him eating that ice cream? The answer is yes. You see that he's enjoying that ice cream cup. That's it. You're happy. But he didn't say bracha on it. He didn't bless. He forgot as a child, seven years old, six years old, he forgot to say shakol niyabidvaro on that ice cream. For you as a normal father, yes, I'm, I, I hope I'm talking to normal people. You're still happy that he's happy, right? Like, oh, you didn't say the bracha, and that's it. That's a bitter father. That's, that's, that's a horrible father. That's not a happy father. That, that's not a holy father. Can't enjoy his son's satisfaction because he forgot to say the bracha. A good, normal, decent father will sit with his child. Okay, you want to educate him. You want to, to give him more wisdom. So you understand that that kid is still a kid. And he desired that cold ice cream, sweet ice cream. And you will explain to him on the importance of the blessing. And you will show him how really you should eat ice cream without uh, dripping on your beard and, and your jacket. And you know, you're going to teach him how to be a, a, a normal person. And you're not going to be too hard with him on the blessings. You will guide him and help him to understand the importance of, of gratitude, of thanking Hashem. You know, Hashem, He gave us the ice cream. Hashem gave us all those wonderful things that we have. So at least we can thank Him. Because really there is nothing that we can do back for Hashem to pay back on all of His greatness, on all of the wonders and bounty that He gave us. You will, you, you, you will educate Him according to His level, to His ability. Hand in hand you will walk with Him to the chupah, to mitzvot, to masim tovim, to all the great things. The Creator is the same. He is normal. He is healthy in His mind. He is okay. He is a good person. He is with you. Even if you forgot to say the blessings. Even if you now have a certain desire and you forgot to wash your hands. He's with you. He loves you. He's happy when you're happy. This is why He made it to be so tasty even when we're falling. Even when we're failing. Even when we forgot to bless. The taste of the watermelon doesn't change if you're blessed or if you haven't. The taste of the ice cream doesn't change if you're blessed if you haven't. There are different things that are being changed if you forgot to bless. But Hashem is happy from your satisfaction even if you forgot to bless. Now, Hashem wants you to understand that really you need to have gratitude. That really that ice cream is coming from somewhere. <coughs> and that is also what the, the rabbis, the righteous rabbis taught us and said for us in the wordings of the blessings that we're going to remind ourselves while blessing exactly where that fruit came from. We're saying, Baruch Atah Hashem, bless you Hashem, Elokeinu, our God, Melech HaOlam, the King of the world, that everything become by His will, that He created the fruit from the tree, that He created the fruit that came from the ground, that He created the bread. We're reminding ourselves that there is a Creator. That's His will. He doesn't need the honor. He doesn't need the respect. 
He just wants us to be connected that while we're eating, we're going to understand what we're doing. That we're going to eat the food with the right understanding that that food been delivered and been created and been made and invented by someone. That made it tasty and delicious and, and, and well done just for you. And it's okay because he wants you to be happy. And for you it will be better to remember where it came from. So us, for us, in Avodat Hashem, when we're trying to serve the Creator, we must understand that the intention of the Creator is that we will be who that He made us to be. And we must follow that line, and not to move from that line to the sides, because that we're afraid what people will say, and how people will react, and what people will do, and how they're going to come, and all of those things are nonsense. It happens to you only because that you are disconnected from yourself. That you don't have an inner dialogue with yourself of what is my real purpose in life. What really I should do. What really the Creator wants me to do. How are you going to know what the Creator wants you to do? You need to listen to the nature of your creation and to let it shine. If you like music, you must play. If you like singing, you must sing. If you like learning, you should learn. If something else is important in your life, in reality, like paying your mortgage, like paying your bills, so that's the mission and you should walk hand in hand with Hashem and pay your mortgage and pay your bills and bring more dollars or shekels to your bank account that you will have the ability to pay your rent in time. And if you will do it with Hashem, you will understand how great it is. And you must understand that that's your mission. And while doing that in life, you're accomplishing and achieving Hashem's will from you. But when your eyes are open to the sides, and you're distracted by this world, and every other person is distracting your thoughts and confusing you from your purpose in life, and you become jealous and scared, and, but why he can swim in his pool, and why she can drive in her limo, and why he can build houses, and why he can travel the world, and why he can sit and learn, and why she is the... When you think like that, you cannot succeed. Why? Because you lost your inner connection, to reality means to the truth, to the purpose of your life, to the Creator. You lost your connection with the truth, you lost your connection, no Wi-Fi with the Creator. You lost connection. You lost your connection when start falling in the trap of the evil inclination that is revealing and showing the, the, the physicality of, of your surroundings, of the physical world, and pretending to have options for you, and invitations for you, and ways for you, when really there is only one lane, and only one commandment that you should follow, and it's the word of Hashem. And the word of Hashem is a word that is coming between the lines. The voice of Hashem is the voice of His love to you, His patience. His understanding, His compassion, His relationship with you. Because we all experiencing in our life the supervision, the individual and private supervision on our lives. We know exactly what's going on in our lives. We see. We see the hand of the Creator in many situations. You can see Hashem's guidings when you're eating. You can see Hashem's guidings when you're talking to people. When you speak to some people you know that it's wrong. If you have a certain friend, you're talking with him, you see your wife becomes explosive. Why? You need to pay attention. Something is going on. You know that there is a certain friend that after you're talking to him, you feel so down and depressed. Okay, so be aware to that. Listen to your senses. Certain things that when you do them, you wake up in the next day broken to pieces and you cannot recover for three days after doing that. Okay, so maybe you should pay attention to the waves and moves of your life. To be aware to them, not ignore them. 
and follow your senses and your good thoughts of how to climb above those struggles and how to become a stronger person and how to express your real emotions. And if you need to cut certain relationships, so you must cut them. And if you need to break some commitments, you need to break them. And if you need to separate some partnerships, you need to separate them, no matter how scared you are. Because you're never going to succeed while following your fears. Because what that you will meet in the end of that fear, of that path, is your fear. Like the verse is saying, Et asher yagorti bali. If you're afraid of something, and you're always, always, always going toward that thing, scared and terrified, you're going to meet it. If you are scared from something, walk away. Don't be afraid anymore. Go to a different place. You're afraid of that person. Okay. So don't be in touch with him. So finish it. Just put an end to that. You're afraid of yourself. Okay, so go deep and, and, and confront yourself. You're afraid of certain situations. Okay, go and deal with your fears. Solve them once and for all. And if you're going to do that... With brave, with courage, you will see results to your effort. Because Hashem will be there with you because you will speak the truth. Because you will be a person of truth and Hashem will support you and will give you the strength to stand in those tests. But as long as you're separating yourself from the Creator with your foreign thoughts and your fears and anxieties, and I don't know, and I must do this, and calling this person and counting on that person and on that book, and oh, I read that book and I did six hours in Bodhidut. What are those advice? You think that by reading a book, your problems in life will be solved? You need to be sick to think like that. Really? You saw that in life, that by reading a book, your, your problems ever been solved? I never saw that. That book saved my life. No, that book never saved your life. Your conclusions, your deep understanding about your condition, and the reason that you start taking responsibility on your life, and you changed your way, saved your life. Yes. Not that book. Maybe that author, maybe the person that gave you that book, they have a merit, they have a share. By those holy people, some pure message woke you up. Wonderful. May the Creator bless them forever on their good. Amen. What's the connection to your success? Your success depends in your effort in life to become a better person, a stronger person, a nicer person, a generous person, a, a kind person, a caring and loving and supportive. That's what it brought you to your success. That you finally decided to deal with life. To be more patient, to sit for another hour and talking to your wife, to sit and to listen to your children. Your decision changed your life, not that book. That book woke up a certain spark that was belonged to you already from ancient days. That book helped you to connect to who that you are. You're respecting someone because of learning from that book, not because of that book, just because that, that book helped you to open your eyes and to see that you really love that person more, that really you want to respect and you couldn't understand how to do that. It's your success, not the book's success. And when you will take decisions in your life out of a good cause and out of a good reason, you will succeed. And you will grow in all aspects of life. You'll make more money, you'll make more friends, you'll have better relationships, your, your house will be cleaner, everything. It, your house won't be clean because you learned the book on cleaning. Your house will never be clean because you learned all Hilchot Pesach. You, no, your house won't be kosher to Pesach because you know the Shulchan Aruch, the rules of how to clean the house of Pesach. It doesn't clean the house. It will ever, never will clean your house. The fact that you sat and learned. If you will take the right conclusions from that book and go and scrub the, the floor and the, and the vessels and the, and the cabinets, it, your house will be clean. <laughs> but you need to clean it. The book won't clean your house. You need to clean your house. 
and you need to clean your spirit. So you went to a lecture, so you heard an amazing speaker, so you read a fantastic book. It's amazing, amazing theories. Those are amazing words of wisdom that cannot be useful unless you're going to use them. Practice them, bring them into your life. They cannot fix your life, those words. Only if you will take those words, will take those conclusions and gonna go and make changes in your day, in your hours, in the way that you wake up, in the way that you go to sleep, in the way that you eat, in the way that you drink, in the way that you dress, in the way that you behave, in the way that you think, that you will force yourself to become more and more connected to the truth. Truth. Truth is the name of the game. Truth means reality, grounded, facing reality. You have a family, you have people you need to take care of. You, need pe you have people that you need, that needs you. You have people that are surrounding you that needs to hear good words from you. You must give that good word. You need to give that hug. People that are guiding you to walk in the clouds with your eyes closed, I, I, I don't know. Doesn't seem logic to me to follow them. People that are down to earth and giving you advice of how to deal with reality, it's someone to listen to. Someone that tells you, you need to do this, you need to do that. I, I learned from, from, from people like that. I read many, many books that are telling you that you need to close your eyes and never to see a shape of a... not a shape of a woman. No shape of a person. There were righteous people, so-called righteous people, that were not shaking hands of people in the streets. They wouldn't touch no one. Now if someone comes to shake your hand and you're not shaking his hand because you're so pure, it doesn't smell good. I don't like it. For me, it doesn't look like holiness, like purity. For me, purity feels much more like you can accept me even though I'm not as pure as you. Because you're pure, purer than me. So you can accept me, so you can love me. You can see through my husks, through my coverings. I feel that that's purity. I think that that's purity. Now, as a pure person, that sits for nine hours every day and learning Torah and doesn't have time for his children, doesn't have time for his wife, doesn't have time for his neighbors that are screaming and breaking plates every evening and, 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 and tearing and crying every night. And he is so noble and pure and, and divided from this world completely. I don't know. It doesn't smell good. It doesn't feel good. More makes sense to me that a righteous man will go and make peace between those people and gonna drop another hour of his learning to sit with his child and teaching him. And if he sees that his wife, she needs him, like every person, like you don't need your wife, like only she needs you, you don't need no one. A normal person, a sensitive person, a caring person, it's a righteous man. For me, that's a righteous man. And not a person that knows how to fly in the sky and just because that he's riding on horses of flaming fire. I, I don't, it, it, it doesn't seem right. I think that the greatness of the real righteous ones is not the spiritual levels that they achieved. It's how powerful they were between people. How strong and dedicated they were to influence positivity and hope and friendship and peace between people that are, are walking here on earth. I think that's more what Hashem expects from us. That we will be down to earth, that we will communicate, that we will share. If you will sing, if you will dance, if you will play, if you will open that store that you dream to open, if you will make that game for children to play that you dream to make that game, I don't know what. If you will do that, you will reach out to those souls that your heart desires to reach out to. 
And those people will grow because of, of you, because of your merit. And the world will become a better place. And people will be able to enjoy your vision and your dream and your music. But if you're not going to let that freedom that is screaming from inside, if you, if you won't let it free, if you won't let it go, the world won't be able to enjoy your talents, the light that Hashem planted inside of you. And you blocked the light of Hashem from the world. And you're not allowed to do that. You're not allowed to do that. So, I'm begging, please allow yourselves to be yourselves and just understand that you are who that Hashem made you to be. And it's gorgeous, it's fantastic. You don't need to be different. You just need to not, not, not lie and pretend to be someone else. Just be who you are. You don't need to laugh that people will think that you're laughing. And you don't need not to laugh that people won't think that you're laughing. You don't need not to sing because other people will think that you are singing now. It's crazy. <laughs> it's such crazy. You just need to be who you are. And that's the joy and satisfaction of Hashem. To see you sitting and eating your ice cream. And now that you remember that you forgot to bless, so say it. You're allowed to say the bracha even in the middle of your eating. Say, Shakol With a smile, with a positive attitude. Oh, I forgot to bless. Baruch Atah Hashem. You're going to make more, more people happy by saying, Oh, I forgot to bless. And say the bracha. Baruch Atah. People now will be happy. People will eat. Oh, you remember, I also forgot to bless. Oh, I forgot to bless. Now what? what you... Relax. Hashem is happy when you're eating, when you're enjoying. Hashem is very positive, I'm telling you. I met him once, he's a very nice person. <laughs> Thank you, Hashem will bless you. I bless you from the bottom of my heart. The Muna Project, non-profit organization, you can watch us online, Facebook, Twitter, SoundCloud, remind me, Facebook, YouTube, um, what else, Instagram. And all the rest of the creepy outlets, we're using them all. Emuna.com. Hashem will bless you. Thank you so much. Amen. We hope you enjoyed this video very much. Please now remember to subscribe and like this video and share it with your friends to help spread faith in the world. For more, please visit Emuna.com. May your light shine always and your requests should be answered with the greatest blessings. Amen.